In the previous video, we did a general overview of all the different ways in which we can simulate circuits locally using Qiskit and also how we can execute them in IBM's quantum processors. So in this video, now we're going to start going over some of the different modules that we can use to run simulations so that we can understand the differences between the different options we have available. So first we're going to start with the quantum info module. So the quantum info module is specifically used when you want to simulate the quantum properties of the output state of a circuit. So for that, let's go ahead and get started by implementing a circuit in Qiskit. So for that, we're going to uh, import from Qiskit the quantum circuit class, and then we're going to import the Qiskit quantum info module as QI because we're going to be using a lot of the different classes supported in there. So first we're going to create a very simple circuit. So let's say we have only two qubits and both of them we're going to apply uh, just a Hadamard gate. So let's go ahead and draw that circuit. And here we can just see that we're applying Hadamards on both Q1 and Q0. So if we want to look at the state at the output of this circuit, all we need to do is, well, let's save it on a variable, let's call it psi. And from the quantum info uh, module, we're going to use the state vector class. And all we're going to pass here is that quantum circuit. And then if we display that psi, here we can see in ket notation, the state in equal superposition of the basis states 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So that's basically a simple simulation of, of a circuit that gives us the state at the output. Now, the great thing about this state vector object is that we can do all sorts of different things with it. So for example, let's assume that we want to uh, find the probabilities of finding each of these uh, four possible states. So for that, all we do is take that and use the probabilities method. So let's save it in a variable called probs. And if we print that, then we can see the probabilities of finding each of the four possible states. Uh, and as you know, uh, the, the those probabilities correspond to the modulus square of the probability amplitude. So we get probability of a quarter for each of those possible states. We can also find the counts of a simulation as if we were executing this circuit and taking measurements at the output. So let's save that in a variable called count and let's just do psi and then find sample counts. And to this, we pass the number of shots for which we want to find uh, the total number of counts. And if we print that, we can see that we get a dictionary where we have sample from that circuit and find the different number of times we measured the four possible uh, states from that circuit. And the great thing is that this dictionary is already in the right format. So we can, for example, use from the Qiskit visualization package, uh, the plot histogram function. And if we pass that um, dictionary, then we can get a nice plot of the different number of counts uh, that we obtain from the simulation. Now, another thing we can do is instead of finding the total number of counts we got for each of the four possible state, actually sampling from the circuit and getting a list of the different states that we measure. So the way we would do this is let's save it in a variable called samples. And again, we get, we take our state vector object psi and we do sample memory. And again, we pass the number of shots. And if we print those samples, we can see that this simulated as if we were executing the circuit 10 times and in the first instance we got state 0 1 second one 1 0 0 1 0 0 and so on so in essence even though the quantum module is running a simulation that gives us the state vector then we can take that object to obtain the 
emulation of that circuit as if it was being measured. We can do slightly more sophisticated things, like for example, finding the um, expectation value of some observable. So for that, let's just create some uh, observable O using this parse poly operator. And you don't need to understand what's going on here. This is just some random example that creates this operator that we can show in the form of a matrix. And what we can do is then, you know, save in, let's say a variable call O expectation. We can take again our state vector object and use expectation value and pass that operator. And then if we print that, we see that we get an expectation value that will correspond to finding the sandwich product of that state with the operator O. Another thing we can do is take again our object and use the draw method to find different visualizations. For example, I can pass the parameter block. And if I draw that, you can see we get the block sphere for that particular uh, state at the upper of our circuit. And you can look at the documentation to see what different visualizations are there available. In a similar way, we can look at the density matrix at the output of a circuit. So for example, let's call that row and let's use the density matrix class and pass that circuit. And if we now display our density matrix, we can see that we get the corresponding density matrix for that particular state. The objects from a density matrix also have visualization methods. So we can also do draw and for example, do um, this uh, cityscape option and it will show us the cityscape plot for that state. Now our density matrices, we can also find, for example, the partial trace of the system. So let's call that, let's say row one. And then from the quantum info package, we can use this partial trace function where we pass our state and then the qubits we want to trace out. So in this case, let's say we want to trace out qubit zero so that we get the density matrix for qubit one. And then if we display that, we can see now that we get a density matrix only for that part of the system. Lastly, another thing we can do is instead of looking at the state at the output of our circuit, we can find its unitary. So if we use now this operator class and we pass our circuit, when we display that, we see that we get the matrix that corresponds to the unitary for it. So the quantum info module is very convenient when we want to look at the unitary evolution of a state through a circuit and then look at the different properties that state might have. Now, one problem is that we can't really use the quantum info module if our circuit has a measurement. So for example, let's assume that we want to create a quantum circuit with again, two qubits, but now we want to apply, let's say a Hadamard gate, and then we want to measure that qubit. Well, with a quantum info module up to this point, what we could do is just not add this measurement block, but just use that sample counts um, method that we showed. But what if we actually want to use the output of this measurement to do something to the other qubit? So let's say that now we want to apply an X gate to that qubit conditioned on the result of what we measure for the first qubit. So in this case, if we measure a one for that first qubit, we're going to be apply this X gate. If we measure a zero, then we're not going to apply it. And let's say we wanted to look at what the results of the circuit will be. Well, we really can do this with a quantum info module, right? If I try to use, you know, QI state vector and pass that circuit, it's gonna throw an error and it's going to say cannot apply instruction with classical bits measure. So this means we can't use the state vector class on circuits that have measurements. So in this case, we can rely on the quantum info module to run this type of simulation. So in the next video, we're going to cover the basic simulator in the Qiskit package so that we can implement this type of circuits and 
get the response. So in summary, we use the quantum info package when we want to find the state vector or the density matrix at the output of a circuit. And then once we have this state vector or density matrix object, we can find the probabilities of outcomes or sample the state to get the counts or the actual measurements of running the circuit several times. We can also use it to find the expectation value with respect to some observable. We talked about looking at the partial trace of a density matrix. And there's many other quantum information related functions that we can use to analyze states. We can also plot these states in the form of block vectors in the block sphere, or we can even use a Q sphere to represent these results. Additionally, we can also find the unitary of the circuit itself instead of analyzing the states at the output. Now, a couple of important things to keep in mind is that we should not use the quantum info module to try to simulate circuits if they're too large or have too many gates, because these functions are not optimized for that. They rely on basic linear algebra to perform the state manipulation. So if the matrices that we used to do that are too large, then it could take a really long time or uh, might not be able to even compute the results. Also, we can use this quantum info module if we have classical registers or mid-circuit measurements in our circuit. So for that reason, we're going to start looking at other simulators, including the Kiskit package.